Today's comic overview is sponsored by our good friends at Famous Faces and Funnies, located in Melbourne, Florida. Check them out on Facebook and FamousFacesAndFunnies.com. Yes, we do ship countrywide. Exciting episode of Codename New to Be Road 2. Hi, I'm your presenter, Shabu Are You. You know, the the most interesting, the second most important question I always get asked uh, is not G.I. Joe related. It's actually giving people updates on the Elvira comic series. I mean, there I I could see the two big reasons why people would be interested, but the fact of the matter is. Um, it's captivated a lot of people and I wanted, I don't want to sound like a grumpy old guy but you know of course people have said oh you just stick with G.I. Joe and you know the stuff that from back in the day and that is partially true but I've also been sampling a lot of the modern comic series I picked up you know just to see if I could sink my teeth into anything besides G.I. Joe and I've I've talked about this before, and I'll pick up, you know, different things here and there. Um, and for a while, I was actually following the Catwoman series from issue one to issue number six. Um, but I kind of lost interest after that. The one comic that was getting crazy reviews that I had to jump in and follow is this, this Heroes in Crisis that DC is doing. Um, initially like people are like, oh, this is going to be the next big thing and they're going to make a movie at it. After issue number three, and this is what I'm holding, I've read one and two and three, I think it's the most stupidest thing uh, I've, I've wasted, what was it? Like five, five dollars or four dollars a book. So there you go. There's twelve dollars I'm never going to get back. That's how disappointed I am in this. It was really bad. But then you get other surprises like the GoBots, you know, issue one of the GoBots. I mean, I could fully see myself jumping into that. So another, here's another Heroes in Crisis. Crap. And then the Cap, the Life of Captain Marvel. I started to read that, uh, you know, because she's like one of the characters that is getting this new push. We're back in the 90s. You know, she was a, a C character. So I felt like it was okay, but you know, and I'm staying away from the SJW political nonsense. And it's just pure entertainment and writing, art. Those are the criteria I look at. Those are the things that I grew up with from in the 90s and 80s and 90s. I have found the, uh, the Fantastic Four which, you know, again, got the Marvel relaunch. This is issue number one. And I read, like, I guess up to issue number four. And I thought that was actually really good. So that's a good one. Then there's Captain America number one. I, I got, uh, I think this is rubbish. I, I don't, Punisher number one. You know, I read the first few issues of both Captain America and Punisher. I was not impressed. And I talked about the Catwoman thing. I thought that was pretty good. And that that lasted up to issue six, you know. And then DC had the, there's always these gimmicks that they do. That's what pisses me off is like, you know, they put their money into making like Marvel and DC I'm talking about. They put so much investing into movie money. And the way these books are written is like they're trying to capture the same movie audience and we all know that comics is not like that i mean and that's where i think that the elvira and gi joe series are great because they stick with what they are they don't try to be anything that they're not they're trying they're not trying to make everybody happy if you're a fan of elvira if you're a fan of gi joe you're going to like these books and that is true if you're not you're not going to like it but I've noticed that, you know, with Marvel and DC, they don't follow that same 
um, blueprint. They've gone into, oh, we just want to be politically correct and make everybody happy. That's robbing hardcore fans. If you're a hardcore fan of Spider-Man, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff in the comics that you're not happy about. There's probably stuff in the movies you're not happy about. But, you know, regardless, it's just, it's, it's like any business. Dollars. That's it. Dollars. Get the money when you can now and let's worry about the rest later. That's what I see Marvel and DC doing. So anyway, let's jump back into the Elvira series. Like a lot of you have been asking. I've been pleasantly surprised. And thanks to Famous Faces and Funnies, they put aside the cover variants that I've been collecting. And, you know, I don't get in trouble with the misses. <laughs> but it's a great book. It's fun to read. It's light. It's... It, you could see Elvira doing the things. And there's currently two books. And we all, they had a summer special, which was like the G.I. Joe yearbook. So we're going to look into that and talk a little bit more. And hopefully you go to your uh, comic shop and pick up and catch up. Now the cover, the photo variants are actually difficult to find. And they're in short uh, quantities. So if you're able to get them, get them. Because I, you know... I see those having value down the road, but um, David Avalon has done it. He's writing both books, and you know we had an interview with him, and he's a great guy, and he's just doing great work. I like, I like the fact that you he's writing these strong like he does Betty Betty Page comic as well, but he's writing these female characters without them being over the top and like, you know, shoving feminism down your throat. You know, it's it's just good to see a strong female character being a female and having a reader just enjoy being, you know, following along in the story. No political, no nothing. It's just a good story and fun. And it's a real enjoy. I look forward to reading Elvira comics uh, where I can't say the same thing about Captain America or the Punisher, sadly, at my age now. So let's dive into what's up with the Elvira lately. If you follow the channel's Facebook and Instagram account, I've been posting the beautiful photo cover variants. There are now two Elvira books. Writer David Avalon was kind to share the process of publication. Each issue has to go to Elvira for her to sign off on. So it's not a guarantee that a new issue awaits for every month. I fully understand this and it makes it that much more special when there is a new issue put aside for me during my visit to Famous Faces and Funnies. During the first Elvira video, the shape of Elvira book had yet to be released. But in this story, we find Elvira being a horror B-movie actress struggling for work. Her agent informs her of a movie from a controversial yet well-renowned director. She jumps at the opportunity. But everything going from the audition to meeting the director and other actors and the set itself all seem a bit off. But she just laughs and chalks it up to being the normal weirdness that surrounds Holly Weird. Now, I'm not an expert in how auditions and how Hollywood works or whatever, but even you could tell from the way David Avalon's writing and Elvira's dialogue that everything is so weird in this scenario. I mean, everybody is so scared, humdum, bland, and cold. It's funny because Elvira has this happy energy and everyone is like all bland and dry without so much as a hello the director's lawyer has her fill out this non-disclosure agreement that's as tall as the eiffel tower and she is like lost at one point and she finds this dungeon in this big mansion and she's like okay i guess this is part of a set and she meets the writer for the director and then everyone is like method acting there and she's just like kind of taken back by this. You just find out, you get a sense that everybody is really weird here. So last we meet Elvira's co-star, whose name is Gil Min. And he's locked in this tank 
again, it's odd, and Alvar just says it's a, probably an actor like Daniel Day Lewis who emerges himself in the character, and like you know, certain actors do that; they become that character for a few days. So she chalks it up to that. She goes in, makes the movie, and everything is weird because how they treat Gilman. It's like they rush him on set, shoot the scene, and then rush him back off. And it's like she doesn't have that connection. Like, you know, you read in all of these Hollywood, uh, I guess, journals, how actors hang out or whatever. It's always like controlled situations. And she just goes about doing her business. I mean, in her mind, this is her big break. Now, the funny thing is, like, Elvira thinks that this is somebody famous underneath this mask. Like, someone that's so committed, she thinks it's Daniel Day-Lewis or somebody that big. And, um, you know, after she's done shooting her scenes, she goes and has a drink and talks to the writer who, sh who has the hots for Elvira. Like, you know, who wouldn't? But the... Even like in conversation, he's very vague and very like ho-hum about what's going on, the actors or whatever. So it's funny because she's just doing what they tell her to do. And in the back of her mind, she has all these questions and no one, they just want her to, you know, stand there, look pretty and then get the hell off. So she's just doing what she's told. At night, she hears a moaning, and, and then one day she was, got drunk, and she wakes up, and she sees Gilman on the bed with her. And you could see that Gilman is kind of like, oh, I'm so sorry, and I'm, you know, he has no idea why he's there, and she does has no idea why he's there. So it's kind of awkward, but he just goes back. So while she was driving back um, for a weekend vacation, <laughs> the the U.S. Fish and Wildlife stopper, and they inform her that Gilman is actually a sea monster from Brazil. She thinks this is hilarious, and it sounds far-fetched too. The Fish and Wildlife agents uh, tell Avira that they're there for Gilman. They want to take him back to where he belongs and save him. She kind of then like blows it off as rubbish until she starts thinking and watching Gilman like eat crickets and some crazy shit. And then she follows and finds this secret where she sees where Gilman is actually stored. Gilman tells the story that he was, he's in fact a sea monster and that he was captured by this director and producer and forced to be on set. Alvira conjures up this cockamamie plan of setting him free and returning him back to his family. But of course, the director and the producers are wise to this and try to stop her. And that's where we are in this Shape of Elvira comic. The best way I could summarize this story is like those classic 1940s, 50s horror movies, B-movies like, you know, the Mummy, Universal stuff that was back in the day. This has the look and tone of that. And I find that to be really cool. Now, the next is a one-off. It's a summer spectacular. And there's two stories within this book. The first is actually kind of cheesy. It's making fun of The Walking Dead and all those zombie movies. So again, another famous director decides to hire actual zombies to appear in the movie. Elvira has no idea that, what, what, that these are actual zombies. And then she puts things together and tries to exploit the director for, for exploiting these poor zombies. So it's actually hilarious. The second story is a race run by the devil himself. So Elvira like tries to outwit the devil at his own games. The last, now we're going to go back to the Mistress in the Dark uh, storyline, which is the crown jewel. And this is the book to read. It is so good. And I said it in the first video, how Elvira is going back in time and meeting famous uh, characters like Edgar Allan Poe, and he, she's being chased by Vlad the Impaler. And she finds out that, you know, there was a, dev, a deal with the devil that was made. And she is sent to hell because she has, like, kind of like Dante's Inferno. So she has to go through all the levels in hell to get to the devil, to talk to the devil, to get her out of hell, and get away from Vlad and all of, all of this mess that she's been dragged into. 
So she's meeting like iconic, you know, characters from uh, Dante's Inferno and a uh, mythos of like, uh, like the Minotaur, the uh, three-headed dog, that guy who takes you in the river to the hell or whatever in the boat. But again, this book, if you like like cheesy, you, those universal horror movies, Elvira and your history person, this book just touches all of those wonderfully. And I highly recommend Elvira, Mistress of the Dark Comic. And it's actually, from what I've heard from uh, Famous Faces, um, it's going like hotcakes. And I'm glad that people are responding to it. So anyway, this is Shibu R.U. with a comic overview for Elvira.